Hi, my name is Amberly, and I have the privilege of serving as one of our executive pastors here at Transformation Church. We just wanna say thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you are watching from. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We believe that God has a word for you. So let's jump into this amazing message. Are y'all ready for the word? All right, it is week two of our series, Holy Rebellion. Holy Rebellion. And um, I wore my T.D. Jakes white suit today because I've got business with Jesus this morning. So I am, uh, I'm excited for this word today. And I know, as I did last week, that I'm on clear assignment. Um, there are no games to be played and there is no time to be wasted because there is a world who needs hope. There is a world who needs to know that the end is not come. There is a world that needs to know that someone cares about them. There's a world that needs to know that their past does not define them. There's a world that needs to know that just because something bad happened to you does not mean that God is done with you. So it is time for us, the ones a part of the Holy Rebellion, to stop playing games in the four walls of our church and talking about people in our B groups and go out into the world and actually make a difference. Week two, there are no games. Y'all thought I was just playing for week one? All four weeks is finna be like this, so you might as well just buckle up. Because so many of us have lived too long, us teeter-totting between are we gonna live for God or not, and meanwhile, there are people in your life that are not waiting on me in this white suit. They're waiting on you in your plaid shirt. Well, if I could just get them to church, then God would do something. Newsflash, they are with the church when they're with you. And there is no greater testimony that's going to happen in the four walls of this church than that could happen in your cubicle if you would live bold, understanding that God put you there on purpose and for a reason. And we have created so much in church that if you feel like you're supposed to do something for God, that you should work in ministry. Is this something that people have got, like, if you feel like you're inspired for God, oh, I'm supposed to work for church. Maybe, some of you, but there is a majority of people that ain't supposed to be working at the church. You're supposed to be the church in your workplace. But as long as you are looking to get to a certain platform or a certain place or a certain amount of notoriety, you will never have the opportunity to see personal transformation in your own life and in the lives of those around you. And the goal of this series is for you to know very clearly, I said it last week and I'm gonna say it again, you were created with the purpose and the power to stand up and stand out. That is why you are created. You are not created to fit in. You are not created to look like everybody else. You are not created to simply be like everybody else. And I am here to revoke your regular card. You don't get to be regular tomorrow. You don't get to downplay the anointing that God put on your life. You don't get to live to the standard of the people that you know you ain't supposed to be like. I'm revoking your regular card and it's time for you to stand up and be the man or the woman of God that he has created you to be. And here's the problem. You've only put yourself in circumstances and situations where people don't know the greatness on the inside of you because you knew if they called it out, some stuff in your life that you like would have to go. I'm going to have to slow down. My goodness. I think it's the suit. Here's the real issue. You know there's greatness on the inside of you. You know you're called to stand up and stand out. The truth is it would take some stuff in your life that you like. Laziness. Some of us just like being lazy, talking about people, setting boundaries. Here's a crazy one, being accountable and vulnerable. And I'm here to first say this, it's in you. Some of you have been trying to wonder, is it really in me? Do I have the power and the Yes, it is in you. And I'm here to lovingly and kindly encourage you and slightly punch you in the stomach just a little bit for you to wake up because some of you have forgotten you were you. (laughs) Some of y'all forgot who you were. 
Some of you have forgotten, not who you are, who you actually are. You've forgotten that there's greatness on the inside of you. You've forgotten that God does speak to you. You've forgotten that since a little age, you would start be like, did anybody else see that? Did y'all see that glow in the corner? And be like, oh, be quiet. You, no, 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 no. That was real. You really do see in the spirit. You really do have wisdom beyond your understanding. You really do know how to navigate stuff you ain't never been in before. It's God on the inside of you. And I came to wake you up this morning and said, it's time for you to stand up and it's time for you to stand out it's time it's time if there was any other time that the world was primed for you to stand up and make a difference it is now it's time to stand up and be a part of this holy rebellion and here's the thing whether you realize it or not by the fact that you have enlisted and named Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you automatically got drafted in it's too late. If you're like, well, I didn't know I was set. I'm so sorry. You didn't know, but you're here now. So you might as well be a part of it. And uh, this week, I'm very excited because we're going to take this thing a little bit further. And uh, I want to read a scripture. Actually, I think they have it on the screen. Can you throw that up there for me? We're going to read this scripture um, together. And uh, this is the anchor scripture for this series. Romans 1, 16. And by the end of this series, if you don't know nothing else, I want this to be in your spirit. If somebody says, well, why do you do what you do? And why are you acting that way? And why are you so bold about your faith? And why do you always be posting your testimony? And why, do, why, 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 why? You can simply say this. This is going to be your scripture. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to all say this scripture together, okay? Matter of fact, here's what we're going to do. I'm wearing a white suit. It's not Easter, but it still works. Why don't we stand up for the reading of God's word? Don't get it twisted. I did grow up in a church where you had to stand for the reading of God's word. All right. I'm going to count to three. We're all going to say it together. Now, real quick, this is where we can tell who's the slow readers and who's the fast readers. So we're going to take it right down the middle. Some of y'all try to impress and read fast. And some of y'all, we're going to pray for it because you can you be a little behind. It's okay. We're going to take it at a good pace. I'm going to count to three. And then you just, you just follow me. Has everybody got it? Good. Hopefully this don't go like us clapping. Y'all ever heard us clap before? Anyways. <laughs> Y'all remember that? It was like, clap on the one. Everybody's like, okay. Here we go. One, two, three. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. Give yourself a clap, a, a round of applause. You can have your seat. You can have your seat. We are not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of God's power in my life. And I said it, but you were created with the purpose and the power to stand up and stand out. Now, here's the thing. Um, I was talking to somebody last week, and after last week's sermon, they were gassed. They were like, all right, here we go. Let's do it. Like, that type of personality. If that's not naturally you, it's okay. You're still part of the rebellion. We need you. But there are some crazy people who um, last week, out of that sermon, you started thinking, I need to do something ridiculous. I need to do something outrageous. I need to, I, like you were ready to overthrow the, uh, the PTA group at the school. You're like, this is the year. I tell Becky that she better get in, okay? Hold on. <laughs> and sometimes, uh, specifically in church, we get so caught up and we think that we have to do something spectacular. And I want to tell you something and clarify before we get into the word today that just because something isn't spectacular does not mean it's not supernatural. I want to clarify something as we get into this rebellion, because some of y'all would leave here with the pressure to do spectacular. I want to tell you, just because something doesn't feel or look spectacular does not mean it's not supernatural. I present to you Isaiah 53 2. They don't have the scripture because they're just throwing this out there. Jesus, it says... It was not something impressive or attractive or something for us to give a second look to. Literally, the prophet describes Jesus and they say he was not some crazy. He wasn't uh, on the cover of GQ magazine like Michael B. Jordan, like, hey, I'm Jesus. How you doing? That... No, 
Just because something isn't spectacular does not mean it's not supernatural. And I want to tell you today that if you want to find yourself in the middle of a holy rebellion, I want to warn you, it might feel real regular. It might fit. You may leave here thinking it's time to rebel. What am I going to do? Here's what you're going to do. The next time you find yourself in a group of people gossiping, you're not going to judge everybody. You're not going to go. I will no longer stand for this. Here's what you're going to do. You know what, guys? I'm actually just going to head out. I love y'all so much. And I'll see you next week. That was your whole rebellion. Some of y'all, you work at the bank or you work in investments or you work and there's going to be something going on and you're going to think, you know what? Every single year I've done this on the taxes and I just marked this little box and ain't nobody ever checked it. And all you're going to do is not mark that box and mark the one that's true. You're going to have integrity. It's going to feel real regular. It's going to feel just like filling out some paperwork. But as long as you are caught up with the outrageous, you will miss the miracles that happen in the regular. And when your kids, when you get super mad and the kids is acting wild, instead of continuing the cycle and screaming at your kids, you know what's going to feel real regular? You're going to take a deep breath. I'm still learning how to do this. Abby's teaching me. You go in and you go out before you yell. And if you do it, you actually don't end up yelling. I want to say this because some of you, there are two groups of people. The first group of people feel like you got to do something outrageous. And so you started mustering up all these plans that God didn't put his hand on. The second group of people is people who feel like you don't have enough to be spectacular. Just because it's not spectacular doesn't mean it's not supernatural. Being a part of this rebellion might feel supernatural. Let me be clear. It might feel super natural. Re real regular. And as long as you discount your consistency, your ability to simply show up. Here's what I want to get into. Um, I was talking to this person and they were stuck on this question. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? If I'm called to stand up and stand out, what am I going to do? And that is a good question to ask. And I believe the Holy Spirit is going to give clarity. But before we get on what you're going to do, I want to ask a different question that is keenly important to this rebellion. Not what are you going to do, but why are you going to do it? Today, I want to talk from this subject, the root of a rebellion. The root of a rebellion. If you are not careful, you will get so excited and so uh, gassed on the idea of being a part of a rebellion, on the idea of being a rebel, that you will forget to inspect the reason why you are doing what you're doing. And if you don't understand why you're doing what you're doing, what you're doing will never matter. Every rebellion has roots. Every single rebellion, every single revolution, every single reformation in history, it all had roots. And today I want to talk about the root of a rebellion. I want you to write this point down. The root of your rebellion always determines the fruit of your rebellion. The root of your rebellion. This is stuff we don't want to talk about, which is exactly why we're about to talk about it today. Why do you want to stand out? Not what are you going to do to stand out, but what's underneath all of that? Why do you want to stand out? Why do you want to talk to that person that way? Why do you want to leave everybody? Why does no one ever understand? And it's always they fault. Like, what, what, why? What's the root of the rebellion? And here's what I have come to realize in many rebellions in looking up. If you talk to anybody that considers themselves a rebel, if you talk to anybody who is thinking of rebellion, here's what I have found to be true. Throughout history, there was one single thread that has connected so many different revolutions, so many different rebellions, and so many different refor reformations. And it was not something big. It was not a big moment. It was not something um, massive. It was something super small. Actually, it was a seed. 
I have a seed here, and um, I want to talk about this seed today. I want you to know that the most common theme and the most common temptation is for you to go throughout life and not to realize that somewhere along the way, this seed of offense has entered into your heart. Now, the seed is not the issue. The seed is not the issue. The seed is the start of something, but the real issue I want to talk about is what happens from the seed of offense. The scripture talks about something in Hebrews that we're going to go today, that from the seed of offense, there are roots that start to grow. And the roots I want to talk about today is a root of bitterness. I know this is, this is very, y'all are like, wait a second, what, how is there, I thought we were about to take over the world. Yes, please track with me. But I want you to know that in today's culture, if you want to stand out, if you want to be different in a culture that cancels everybody, in a culture that is offended at everybody, and in a culture that when you are raised, you are taught in school to be bitter towards certain people based off the color of their skin. You want to know the most rebellious thing you could ever do is live a life that says, I refuse to be bitter. I want to read you this scripture out of Hebrews. This is what it says. Work at living in peace with everyone. Work at living a holy life for those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after one another so none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. Make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau who traded his birthright as the firstborn for a single meal. You know that afterwards he regretted it. When he wanted his father's blessing, he rejected it. It was too late for repentance, even though he begged through bitter tears. I want to talk about bitterness today because I believe this root of bitterness will lead you to rebel for all the wrong reasons. Underneath all of the yelling, all of the rebellion, all of the external vibrato is something down in there that is simply a seed of offense. Now, bitterness is, is interesting because bitterness, last week we talked about shame, and shame is this, shame is a sad emotion that is introspective and internal, and it's a self emotion. You're focused on yourself and you're in yourself and you're sad. Here's what bitterness is. Bitterness is anger and it starts to become external and you start to project it onto everybody else. Bitterness takes you from being sad and hurt about the offense to it becoming the lens that you see life through. And now every single person you come into contact with is somehow connected with that one person that hurt you. Now, I want to slowly walk us into this because sitting in a room this size, there's a good amount of us that are feeling like, I'm not bitter. I don't have any bitterness in my heart. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever been offended? Raise your hand if someone's ever offended you. Keep your hand raised if it's been longer than a week and you still feel offended by somebody. Keep your hand raised if it's been longer than two weeks. So the offense is still there. And how does a plant stay for longer than just a couple days? It, ha it has to take root. And many of us would never say it outright. But if when their name comes up, you get angry, you might be bitter. If when someone who looks like them walks down the hallway, you might. If right when you see them scrolling on Instagram, you say, Psh, I don't even know why. <laughs> they ain't even. There might be, and here's, here, here's the thing. I want to be honest with this. Some of you, you're not bitter. There's a couple of things. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're not bitter to someone who's even here anymore. And this, these are the roots I'm coming for today. Because before you take off and start and stand out what God called you to do, 
If you do not address that root, you will not be able to produce any other fruit than that which is bitter. And if the scripture says, taste and see, the Lord is good. No wonder there are a lot of people when they taste the life of a Christian, they think, I don't want any of that. Because somewhere down, there was an offense. There was something that just happened that offended you and then it went into your heart and it started to grow roots. And now you find yourself in a place where you're bitter. And here's, here's the specific assignment I felt today to talk about bitterness. Bitterness is after one of the greatest testimonies you have in a dark world. And it is your joy. The real message I felt today is there's some of you whose circumstance, life, and situation is slowly draining you of your joy. You're not smiling as much as you used to. You don't laugh at the same stuff you used to laugh at. When people start being funny, you say, stop playing around. We ain't got time for all that. When the scripture is very clear that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So if bitterness is slowly draining you of the very thing that would give you strength to navigate the hard situation, it is very important that we come to this root of bitterness and we make the decision, I refuse to be bitter. Somebody say, I refuse to be bitter. Here's the thing. Um, I want to validate something. Uh, if we're honest, there are situations that have happened in our life where you might be justified to hold on to something for somebody. There's real situations that have happened. There's real pain. There's real hurt. There is real offense. But here's what I've realized. It is hard to be bitter and be a blessing. It's hard to be bitter and be a blessing. And I want to let you know, at the root of our rebellion is not the goal to be bitter. It is to be a blessing in the life of people. It is for you to walk in places and be a breath of fresh air. It is for people to look at your life and see the joy of the Lord on it so strong. It is to look at your life and see how are they still shining in such a dark situation. It is for people to look at your life and see how is she still raising those kids. I remember when that man walked out of her life and now she's got two boys graduating college. How is she doing that? I remember when they broke up with them and they're still, oh my gosh, they found someone else in their life is beautiful. I remember when they had the moral failure and God turned it around and now it's the most beautiful thing. How? Bitterness comes to steal your joy and it's hard to be bitter and be a blessing in the life of people. And I came to encourage you this morning. If you want to make a radical declaration, if you want to be a part of a holy rebellion, if you want to stand out in today's culture, make the decision, I refuse to be bitter. No matter what they said about me, no matter how they talked about me, no matter what, how I think this should have gone and I was more qualified for the job and I should have gotten the job and I didn't. No matter if it was, here's the real thing, family. There are people in our heart, parents, godparents, grandparents, siblings, that deep down in there, there's a sense that what if I let them go and what if they don't ever say I'm sorry and what, what am I going to do? There is a root of bitterness. And if you want to stand out and you want to make the declaration of a holy rebel, you say this, I refuse to be bitter. I refuse. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be like everybody else. The way I'm going to stand out, the way I'm going to make a difference, the way I'm going to live my life is I'm going to deal with this offense. I want to give you um, three quick things on how we're going to deal with this bitterness. Here's what I need us to do. I want you to write these three things down. They're going to be quick. Every single week, I'm going to try to give you three practical things you can do during the week. It's not going to be ethereal. If we're going to stand up in this holy rebellion, it's going to be real practical. The first thing I need you to write down is acknowledge the offense. If we're going to deal with the root of bitterness, if we're going to deal with somewhere in our heart that the root of it, you have to first acknowledge it. Let me tell you this. There's stuff that's happened in your life, and the fact that you're ignoring it does not mean it has went away. 
It just means you locked it in the closet. But when you open up that closet, it's still going to be in there. There's, there's, there's people that have left you, and the fact that you just don't see them on your timeline anymore does not mean if you saw them, it wouldn't still hurt. There are conversations you overheard of people talking about you, and just because you blocked them on social media or just because you got a different job does not mean it still doesn't hurt you. You have to first acknowledge there was something that happened that offended me. There was something they said that offended me. There was a job I didn't get that offended me. There were, I have to acknowledge the offense. And I want to make this practical. Some of us, you're going to need help to acknowledge the offense. You're going to have, thank you for the one person clapping. You might have to get a counselor to help you realize that your daddy was not Superman. I know you saw him that way, but you just acted like all that other stuff didn't happen. If you don't deal with that, you will start raising your children and something will come out of you. And you think, where did that come from? Let me tell you, you don't see no fruit that there's not a root somewhere. You have to acknowledge where did that come from? What happened in this? What, 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 what was that thing that motivated me to do that? You have to acknowledge the offense. This next one I want to spend some time on, you have to address the pain. Because just because you point out on somebody that they're cut doesn't mean you walk over to help them. And just because I can say, oh, my arm is bleeding, doesn't mean I have taken time and slowed down enough to address the actual pain. And some of us, you could list Oh, yeah, this is probably what happened and this happened. But I want to ask you a question maybe that you haven't been asked in a while. If you go to counseling, you've probably asked it last week. How did that make you feel? I know you don't need your daddy no more. But when he wasn't there. How? How did that make you feel? I know you found new friends. And you're good. But the truth is, you still kind of miss your old ones. I know life worked out and it's all fine and you're past it and everybody's good. But I want to ask you the question that maybe a lot of pastors won't ask on a Sunday morning. What happened because of that offense? Where did your heart grow hard? Where did you stop letting certain people in who reminded you of them just so that you could have a protection mechanism for yourself? You have to actually address the pain. And I'm telling you, some of you, you're, it's, it's, we're in here and we're excited about a rebellion and we're going to go out and do all this stuff. But until you understand the motivating factor, why? Do I want to start this? Why do I want to do this? You have to first acknowledge, okay, there was probably an offense that happened, and then I have to actually dig into what, what did it do to me? How did it make me feel? You want to know why we do this? It's so important. Because there are people that need what's on the inside of you, and they're going to come up to you saying, man, I went through this, and now I feel completely hopeless, and I don't know how I'm going to move forward. And you will have a response that is able to say, I actually know how you feel. But you are never able to relate to someone in the darkness and the depth of their emotion of how they feel if you have never opened that door yourself. And many of us have left the greatest moment and opportunity for relationship, healing, and ministry. You have closed that door because you're nervous of what happens if you open it. See, before we send the soldiers out in this rebellion, I got to make sure we all understand what the root of our rebellion is. We will not leave out from this place and cuss people out in the parking lot, not because you ain't mad at them, but because you have something down in you and you still mad at somebody else. We will not go back into our workplace and cut corners to get promotions just because we think people ain't looked out for me, so I'm going to look out for myself. We're not going to do that. If we're going to be set apart, if we're going to stand out, if we're going to be different, we're not going to cancel people when they make a mistake. We're not going to make fun. Oh, okay, cool. I'll sit down in my seat. 
If y'all want to stay in the Christian club where we just like everybody else, cool. But if you want to stand out, if you want to give people second chances, if you want to take Paul from being a Saul from being a murderer to being the person that read your scripture of the day, then you're going to have to do some stuff that makes you uncomfortable. And as long as we pretend like there aren't areas of your life where there could be an offense that has grown into a root of bitterness, you will not realize. Here's when you'll realize it. When you're five years down the road into your rebellion and all the people around you look like your past season. Because the roots grew down, the tree grew up, the fruit came out, and there was no other option for the people around you to eat off of but bitterness. So this is how sowing and reaping works. This is how you talk crazy to your parents and now your kids talk crazy to you. This is how you cut corners on your last job and now you have a whole staff who does the same thing. This is, I'm just, I'm just trying to submit to you some tools to help us navigate how are we going to stand up and stand out? You have to acknowledge the offense, address the pain. This third one is very simple. Ask for strength. Because here's the thing. If you could have forgiven that person already, you would have done it. <laughs> if you could have released that person from the frustration, from the bitterness, from the anger, from the holding them captive, from the every time. If you could have done it, you would have done it already. But releasing some of the things that have happened in our lives, releasing some of the abandonment that's happened in our lives, releasing some of the people that turn their back on you, it's going to take strength. It's going to take going to God and saying, God, I don't know how I'm going to do it because what they did hurt so bad. But God, I need, I, I need your strength today. I need you to help me release this person. Here's, here's the thing. Some of you, your prayer this week, the honest truth is the person that you have bitterness toward is yourself. I'm slowly, this sermon is just an onion. We just gonna keep. I'll be up here all day. We just because if you, if you, if some of you just need to forgive yourself because you've started to hold. Here's the thing: you haven't let yourself enjoy certain things because you think you don't deserve it because of what you did. And now there are certain people in your life that are starting to come up and God started to do things in their life and the only thing you have in you is to shut them down because that's what you've experienced for yourself. How? We have to ask for strength. And here's the, the end point that I want to bring us to today. A very simple, very straightforward message is for you to wake up and make the decision. I refuse to be bitter and I choose to be a blessing. You want to talk about standing out in today's culture? I know we showed up today ready for marching orders to how we're going to take over every industry and we're going to go back into and blow up culture. You want to blow up culture? Be a blessing. <laughs> you want to take over your local neighborhood Starbucks and think, man, it has become the greatest place of ministry. Let me make it real clear for you. Don't be bitter. Be a blessing. Say thank you when they hand you the coffee. I know we came in here ready to be like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start our own thing. And we're going to, no, 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 no. We're going to be very straightforward. When we walk into a room, we're going to walk into the room thinking, not what can I get, but what can I give? When you walk into a new job, not who do I need to make friends with so they can give me a promotion. How do I walk in? Let me look for people who are alone. Let me look for people who are hurting. And let me go encourage somebody today. Let me walk in as light today. You want to stand out in today's culture where people are being canceled and trying to give you a reason to be frustrated and bitter. Make a decision in your soul. I refuse to be bitter. 
I will not hold on to that because I know it is draining me of the joy that is the strength that I need for what God has set in front of me. So I will not be bitter. I will not hold offense onto people. I will not hold unforgiveness in my heart, but I am going to live my life in such a way where I'll always be a blessing. There's a scripture. Do y'all have that? Don, do you have the scripture? Uh, uh, Philippians 2. I have it. I think I gave it to you. I'm going to read it um, out of my Bible, but I think I gave it to you in a different version. If you can put that on the screen, I'm going to read it in NLT. Oh, you got it right here. I'm going to read it off the screen. A little ghetto, but it's a different translation. This is, this is the goal for all of us. Philippians 2, 12 through 16. What I am getting at, friends is that you should simply keep on doing what you've done from the beginning. When I was living among you, you lived in responsive obedience. Now that I'm separated from you, keep it up. Better yet, redouble your efforts. Be energetic. Listen to this. Be energetic in your life of salvation, reverent and sensitive before God. That energy is God's energy and energy deep within you. God himself willing and working at what will give him the most pleasure. Do everything readily and cheerfully. Do everything readily and cheerfully. No bickering, no second guessing allowed. Go out into the world uncorrupted. Here's the most beautiful testimony you could be on a Monday morning. A breath of fresh air in this polluted society. You want to talk about taking over as a part of a holy rebellion? Go into everything you do, ready to do it willingly and available and open. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to bicker. I'm not going to go back and forth with people, but I am here to be a breath of fresh air. Can you imagine that? If just the people in this room if just, listen to this, the last two weeks we talked about shame. You want to know the opposite of someone living in shame? Someone who is confident of the God on the inside of them. Imagine if just us in this room were confident of the God on the inside of us and decided to be a blessing every room we walked into. That would change the world. If we could simply say, you know what? I'm here to be a breath of fresh air. I'm here to simply refresh somebody. I'm here to be the encouragement somebody needed today. You're going back into your school this school year. You want to know what your big assignment is? Be a breath of fresh air. And I hope you have a great day. That's acknowledging something. Hi, my name is, what's your name? Simple moments, regular moments, not these spectacular things that get posted in the news and it's an article. It's like local person revolutionizes the fashion industry, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Being kind, loving, gracious. Matter of fact, when you understand the root of our rebellion is Jesus and his spirit, it makes sense how your life starts to produce the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, long-suffering. These are the core elements that make up this rebellion. And I think for a long time, personally, I felt the pressure that I had to do this spectacular thing. I gotta do this big thing so it'll make this big difference. And some of us in this room, there are things that God's called you to do that are gonna change the face of the earth. I have no doubt about it. But I promise you, it's going to start feeling super natural. You're going to start by feeling like, okay, God, I'm going into this meeting thinking, God, how can I be a blessing in this meeting? Some of us going into the meeting, you're going to, your blessing is going to be sharing your ideas that you've held back from the meeting. Some of you being a blessing in the meeting is going to be holding back your ideas because you know there's someone in the room that God is trying to build confidence in and you making a decision before they speak, I'm going to affirm their idea. This is, this is what it is to be a part of our holy rebellion. To live our life as a breath of fresh air. I'm going to ask everybody to stand all over this room. I wanted to leave some space today 
<clears throat> we got about 10 or so minutes before we're out of here. I wanted to leave space today because there are some of you that this is the most important time of the message. I want to ask you if it's not an emergency. I know this is the time where normally you make your plan to go to the parking lot, but I preached 13 minutes shorter to have this time. I want to create space for the Holy Spirit to simply identify some seeds of offense. Because the truth is, a message like this can be spoken, and we think, oh man, I think I'm good. And I'm excited to hear it next week. There could be some things in all of our hearts. Literally, as I was praying before I walked in here, I thought of two things. I thought, man, I, that, is, that is still an area. There's literally a certain spot. A couple of my friends would know it. My wife would definitely know it. If I drive past this place, I start thinking cuss words. Like, it's just all, it's the truth. I just don't have anything good to say. I keep my mouth shut, but God's still working on my mind. And I literally thought, at some point, you're going to have to deal with that. That's what I thought. As, the, as I was walking up here, the Holy Spirit was like, do not get up here. And not be realizing, okay, God, I, I just need your strength. And there, I want to take a few moments. I'm going to just ask the worship team, the band to play. We're going to open up the altar. You can come down to the front if you need to. You can stay in your seat if you need to. We're just going to take six, seven minutes and ask the Holy Spirit. Is, are there any roots in me that you want to dig up? That's it. Holy Spirit, if there's anything in me that you want to do, if there's any anger, if there's any malice in my heart, if there's any resentment toward people, if there's anything that is motivated by proving someone wrong, Holy Spirit, would you simply expose it? That's all we're going to ask. We're going to play for just a few moments. It's just, nobody's going to, we're just going to let the band play and the Holy Spirit's going to minister to you. It's not going to be nothing I say. It's not going to be nothing special to somebody, but the Holy Spirit's going to illuminate. This is the area. This is what you need to do. This is the spot where I've been trying to work on you. And here's what we're going to do. When he says that, I just want you to have something available to write it down. You can write it down on your phone. If you have your notes, if you're at home and you need to write it down somewhere, here's what we're going to, we're going to simply, we're going to start with the, we're going to try to acknowledge the offense today. Some of you, the Holy Spirit, you're, you've already acknowledged it, but you need to address the pain. Some of you, you don't need to stop at the validation of just addressing the pain, but you need to take a step further and say, okay, I need to move towards restoration because I've been, I've been stuck in how bad they hurt me. I've been stuck at how mad I am. I've been, okay, I, I got, at some point, I got to move out of that and I got to ask for the strength. I'm going to pray. I'm going to step back just for just a moment and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit that he would just minister in this room and I'm believing that this will begin the start of some of you seeing your joy return like never before. Holy Spirit, I am stepping and asking, Lord God, that your spirit would come in and you would illuminate the areas and the parts of our heart where there's been something in there that has started to twist the root of our rebellion. There's been something motivating, Lord God. There's been something behind that has not been what you truly want it to be. Holy Spirit, would you come and expose today? I thank you. It is your loving kindness, Lord Jesus. I thank you that even as people begin to come down, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit, your loving kindness draws us to repentance. There is no shame today. There is no burden. There is no pressure of, oh, look what you've done. No, it is your loving kindness kindness that is saying, hey, I see that area and I'm here to help you with that. Holy Spirit, would you do what only you can do? Thank you, Jesus.
presence. We feel your guidance. And Holy Spirit, I thank you right now that you are working on the hearts of your children. Lord God, where there have been areas where we have had bitterness that has taken root, Holy Spirit, I thank you that the gardener, our Father, Lord, that you are doing something so uh, specific on the lives and individuals on each person. And I thank you that it is not with, um, without a clear goal in mind. Lord, I thank you that, Lord, you are addressing these areas because you have made us to stand up and stand out. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that as people are being um, freed, Lord God, from bitterness, as, Lord, as you are beginning to reveal things, Lord God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that your joy is returning to the hearts of your children. Lord, where there has been joy that has been lost, Lord Jesus, where there has been pain, Lord God, that has overshadowed goodness, Lord Jesus, where there has been mourning, Lord God, that has overshadowed your grace, Lord, where there has been fear that has overshadowed your um, goodness in our life, Lord God. I thank you that your spirit is moving, Lord Jesus, and it is opening the hearts of your children, and it is reviving the dead things, Lord God. Thank you for it. With every head bowed and every eye closed, there's some of you in this room or watching right now online, and uh, you have not given your life to Jesus. The truth is that without his help, there are, no th- there are many things in your life that you cannot navigate. And some of you may be watching this, you may have been drawn to it because you realize there's an area of your heart that is cold. There's an area of your heart that feels bitter, that feels angry, that feels frustrated. Can I tell you that Jesus is the only person that says he will remove the heart of stone and return a heart of flesh. Some of you haven't felt anything in a long time. You haven't had, uh, you haven't cried in a long time. You haven't felt any, any emotion. I'm telling you, when you give Jesus your heart, it changes your life. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to count to the count of three. And if you're in here and you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you're watching online, on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. I believe when you raise your hand, it's a sign on the outside of what God is doing on the inside. It's saying, you know what, I surrender. It's putting up your hands as a sign of saying, God, I can't do this by myself. I need your help. On the count of three, if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to clean up your life. There's not a list of to-dos that you do before this moment. This is your moment. If you want to accept Jesus, one, two, three. Lift your hand right now all over this room. He's so proud of you. He's so proud of you. I see you. He's so proud of 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 you. Everybody in this room together, if you could repeat this prayer after me, say, Dear God, thank you for loving me. I admit I've made mistakes. Save me, change me, transform me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Transformation Church, can we celebrate those who just gave their life to Jesus? best decision you could ever make. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it encouraged you. 
Our vision is to represent God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. And if you would like to partner with us in giving, you can text GIVE to 828282 or visit us on our website. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other sermons as well. Our service begins every Sunday at 1045 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now go out and live a transformed life.